Sometimes folks just don't learn. Sometimes you got to dish out some tough love. That doesn't make you a bad guy. That makes you a good guy. But more on that in a little bit. Welcome, everyone, to the weekly SmackDown review here on OTRS Central. The Schleg Daddy coming at you. It's your first time checking us out. Checking me out, I guess. What else am I talking about at this point? Smash that subscribe button. Click the bell. What the hell? So that way you get notified of future videos on this channel. Let's go ahead and talk about this week's show. The opening segment. The Ascension Ceremony. There go the titles. There's only one Intercontinental title. There's only one Intercontinental Champion. And that man's name is Sami Zayn. This is outrageous. The fact that not only does he have to defend his Intercontinental Championship that he never lost. He's still the champ. Not only does he have to defend it, in an odd stack against him, triple threat ladder match. Come Sunday at Clash of Champions. Now here's Scrap Iron Adam Pierce. You know, I just, as I'm starting to like you now, I see you got it out for Sammy. What, what the fuck, Adam? What's going on here? Hey, you got to do that. Why? Why, 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 why? It's horrendous. It's a rudimentary, fundamental abomination of justice that not only... Do we have that triple threat match on Sunday? That Sami Zayn is basically in a quasi-preview on freaking SmackDown. He's got to wrestle both AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy? Now, you're lucky he's a fighting champion. You're lucky he has a very hardy competitive spirit. And he decided to participate in this match. Because this is a crock. It's a crying shame. And I have no idea what to make out of what they're going to do come Sunday at Clash of Champions. All I know is Sammy's been done wrong. I said, wrong. Just like some of you are watching, you're saying, when did you start rooting for Sami Zayn? 2020 is one of them type of years. And I have to call it as I seize it. And what I seize is a man getting screwed out of a belt that he never lost. It's a conspiracy. That's all I'm going to say. Speaking of this conspiracy with the Miz and Morrison going after Otis and the Money in the Bank briefcase, and now we're talking about lawyers and talking about he's going to court and everything else. I'm not sure what the end game here is. I'm not sure what they're really trying to do other than maybe give us something for Miz and Morrison and Otis and Tucker to do for the time being. And if that's the case, so be it okay. Um, but probably should get to the point relatively quickly. Uh, Bailey came out and addressed both Sasha Banks and Nikki Cross with her promo, and I thought this promo pretty good. Like, not great, but pretty good, especially when I look at the standard of Bailey, who I'm not in general a very big fan of. I'm really curious what they're going to do come Sunday at the pay per view with her. You have a couple different directions you could go. Um, we know Nikki Cross ain't beating her clean, that's for damn sure, no matter what you think. It's just in this whole saga, now that they finally went there and split up Bailey and Sasha Banks, I find myself rooting more for Bailey than I do Sasha, like the whole thing has backfired again. For the second week in a row, Grand Metalik was in a match, and I don't remember it. This might have been the point in time that I took the dogs out. Like, as I watch the show, I take notes and do different things, so that way I don't forget. But... I typed in the name of the match, or who was in the match, and only odd, odd thing I put out here was that, why is Kalisto so mad at them? Why why are we trying to break up Lucha House Party? I don't really get it. And I don't remember anything that happened in the match. So surely again, another week of something that was highly, highly forgettable. Now, what's not forgettable is yet another really good video package talking about Roman and Jimmy and Jay and the family lineage and the history and them growing up together and being family. Like, that was another really, really well done piece. Like, when you talk about really good stories that seem to have come out of nowhere, this, this is one of the best stories that I've seen in wrestling in 2020. And I don't know if that says a whole hell of a lot, but in terms of engagement levels, in terms of emotional investment, like, this is right there at the very tippy-tippy-tippy tippy top of the list. And certainly, Jey Uso wants answers. He wants to know why Roman's doing them like he's doing them. 
and why he's doing what he's doing. Well, he's the tribal chief for a reason. He doesn't answer at your leisure and your convenience. He answers at his. And how nice it was, wasn't it, to see Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman watch TV backstage like relatively normal, sane people. If you were looking for reasons to cheer for Roman Reigns, you were presented yet another one on Friday night. You mean you're not standing up and watching it at an angle like a moron? Like you can't see? Like you're actually sitting down in front of the TV and watching it? What a novel freaking concept. That's right, Roman. Rage against the stupidity. You're a hero. Don't let them take that away from you. So, in terms of the first hour of the show, honestly, you know, I'm sitting there watching Sami Zayn and they're trying to put the screws to him. Innocent guy here. So I'm not a big fan of that. A uh, couple of other forgettable things. You know, it was, it was, it was kind of a slow slog. I get picked up a little bit. Once you got to Jay, you know, you could see some of the fire and some of the passion, like good stuff by him. But then we immediately follow that up with Matt Riddle taking on King Corbin. You know it's bad, and you know Riddle absolutely sucks if I'm rooting for King Corbin in any match at any point in time. <laughs> Shut up! Why would anybody like this dude? Just why? I think the match was long, and thank God he lost. Like, that was the one real positive of it, is that King Corbin won. I hope now that Matt Riddle will go away and stay the hell away. Unless you are going to give me a reason to full out treat him like a heel like the hell you should, because there's nothing likable about him. His shtick is stupid, and his face is punchable. It's that simple. Fuck him. Where are they going with this mystery woman Carmella stuff? Like, what's the point of this? Like, what do we need her for this? Like, what are we doing here? Now, it's cool that you've been doing these vignettes for weeks. And I'm okay with that. Like, too often you just bring people in and you have them do something, you have them change a the character, and you don't set up to it. You don't make it mean anything. So I'm okay with this in theory. But I'm just wondering, like, what's the point here? Anybody know? Anybody know where they're going with this? About time to wrap it up and kind of make the reveal and let's get on with shit. I'm just saying. A big reveal this week was they finally went all the way with Alexa Quinn, if you will. Um, her and Lacey Evans. We're, we're supposed to like Lacey Evans? Ugh. Just no. Boring in NXT. Boring in WWE. Like, what is her appeal? I don't know. But now, when you look what happened in this match, even though Lacey wins by DQ, like now you've got Alexa and you're playing off of a kind of Sister Abigail type of thing. And now the Fiend has gotten to her and he's influencing her. And now he's going to be the Joker and she's going to be the Harley Quinn. Like this is easily the most interesting thing Alexa Bliss has done in a couple of years or maybe period on the main roster. Like it took a little while to get there. They took their time with it. And I am now very interested to see where they go with it next. And I want to point out one thing. As she was walking up the ramp, as Roman Reigns was making his way down the ramp, right before the closing segment of the show, like you could see Alexa clearly had those give me them D, that D eyes. That's what she was doing. Like she was looking at Roman. She wanted some Samoan sausage. And because of the type of man he is, he knows that he is a one-woman man and he's staying true to his wife. Furthermore, he knows in this Me Too day and age, he wants nothing to do with the batshit crazy woman because he's not going to take advantage of her in her vulnerable state because he respects women. Again, I ask you, what is heel about this guy? What is there to dislike? What makes him villainous? What? Oh, I know what you're going to say. Oh, let's look at what happened in this main event segment. I don't see where he's saying any of this. Like, this was really good. Let's be clear. This segment was really, really good. Really good. And they're talking about, you know, being the breadwinner for the family. And, you know, Roman saying that he would give the belt to Jay if he could. But right now, but if he did... 
Jay wouldn't know what to do with it. Like that's the type of tough love, the real honest feedback that people that truly care about you give. They don't blow smoke up your ass. They don't sugarcoat things. They don't worry about the packaging or the presentation or do what you do in the corporate world. You gotta be careful how you present it. You gotta make sure. No, the hell with that. He's giving you real deal straight dope. It's not Roman's fault if Jay can't accept that. It's not Roman's fault if Jay doesn't want to hear the truth. It's not Roman's fault if the tribal chief is giving incredibly valuable, career-shaping, career-defining feedback, and his fam, his cuzzo, don't want to accept it. Like, how dare you? And then after Roman leaves, after he has done his duty as the tribal chief, like the responsibilities are vastly different here. You just can't appease everybody. There are responsibilities. There are demands. There are expectations. And the man is doing his damnedest to make sure he lives up to everybody's single bit of work for not just himself and for Paul Heyman, but the entire Uso clan. And then Jay's going to sit there and dare suggest that it might be his time and he can do it? You know, that's what happens. Roman tried to do it the easy way. And Jay just didn't have any of it. Roman tried to help his cousin out. And Jay just wants to sit there and think about, when I'm in public, they ask me, which one are you? That's not Roman's fault. That's your fault, dog. So is it any wonder that Roman Reigns comes out and Superman punches him? Absolutely not. Because being calm and being rational and explaining things and providing solid, actionable feedback clearly wasn't sinking in and working for Jey Uso. At that point in time, as the tribal chief, he had no choice but to sit there and make sure the feedback was heard in a different way. And it's not like Roman lied to him or said anything that was untrue. He let him know that he's not ready for prime time. He let him know that this is Roman Reigns' island. He's the tribal chief. Ain't no way in hell that Jey Uso's beating him at Clash of Champions. And we all know this to be true. Right? As a family man, as the patriarch of the continuation of the lineage of the Samoan wrestling dynasty, the perspective is different. The approach is different. The demands are different. And that's why Roman's in his spot and Jey Uso is not. Now, some of you are going to be moronic and think that this makes Roman a heel. Again, I ask you, what out of anything that he has done up to this point since he came back and came back is anything to dislike whatsoever? The answer is nothing. Everything, everything indicates he's respectable. Everything indicates he's a man of his word. Everything indicates that he deserves your admiration, your love. And worship as our tribal chief, damn you! Roman Reigns, the most interesting character in professional wrestling today. The true, clear, unquestioned, undisputed, raising, defending, number one babyface in all of professional wrestling. What a great close to the show all the family drama and everything else. Now, you could certainly take to the comments and let me know what you thought about this week's show and let me know just how right I am about just how much of a hero, just how much of a babyface Roman Reigns is. Because you all know it's true. And you all know he didn't want to go down this path, but Jay's put him in a no-win situation. It comes Sunday. We know what's about to go down.